I think it might be. All right, guys. Welcome to our Wednesday night standard showdown here at GameSwap in the wonderfully cold Mason, Ohio. Yeah, it's very cold. It is. It's actually warmer today than it has been. Uh, yesterday recently. it was colder. Today it's still cold. It's, yeah. It also snowed today, but you it, know. It, yeah, it just started snowing. Um, so wherever you guys are, I hope you are warm. Unless you enjoy the cold, then I hope you're cold. Um, I guess, yeah. But to start off here today, with round one, we have Jesse Sinopoli, a mainstay of our Wednesday night standard streams on his favorite deck, Mono Red. Mm -hmm. And then we have Clayton on his Soltai Energy deck. If I remember correctly, he goes a little bit bigger than most uh, of them. Yeah, Clayton goes a little bit bigger. He also likes his, uh, his uh, kill spells a lot. Yeah. Uh, so he plays kind of a pretty heavy control package in his deck. Uh, both these players are two very good players who know uh, a lot about the standard environment right now. So we'll see how these decks do. They're also not playing any teamer meta decks, which is kind of nice. But I mean, Soltai Energy is... Soltai Energy is close, but it's still different enough. Where it's it's still an energy deck. It still relies on a Tomb with Aether. It's still it does, stupid. Yeah. A Tomb with Aether is... It's a card. All right, so looks like we have Jesse on a mulligan to six. Is Clayton on seven? Yeah, I, I believe okay. he is. Well, well, there's not a two. He's basically about. on seven now. This is just great. It's probably the best card in the deck. We have optimal turn one plays. So Clayton's getting sides. a swamp, and he played a uh, a blooming marsh. So he probably has a blue source in his hand. Uh, he has a gifted aetherborn in his hand that I believe oh, he okay. wants to play on turn two. Yep, that which makes is sense. very good against this mono red deck. Uh, yeah, two three, you can gain some life and kill some. And demons. he has an aether hub anyway, and also bl blue's the splash color in this deck. It is, yeah. He's only playing it for Scarab rogue refiner. Rogue refiner, scarab. Rogue refiner, scarab, scarab god, um, hostage taker. If he has them, I don't know if he does or not. I think he has like one or two. Okay. I he also has a list uh, botanical sanctum in his hand. Ooh, so we're going for the siphoner here. I like siphoner. Instead Don't of cards the early. gifted aetherborn, maybe he wants to try to eat a lightning strike if or something. If uh, Jesse has it, that would be ideal for Clayton. That or a magma spray. These gifted aetherborn. Uh, Jesse, the Jesse thing should not be playing ag with. magma spray. Ooh, we have triple one drop hand from Jesse here. That's pretty good. It's a nice way to get a lot of creatures on the board, get some early damage, so and let Hazard Chandra. So going out to 16 to draw a card. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't see what the draw was, but I'm assuming it was good. There's the Aetherborn. So I don't, I didn't see any lightning strikes in Jesse's hand, did you? No, there was... I think he has two mountains and an Earthshaker counter in his hand right now. Uh, Yeah, also the uh no kill spell on Jesse's second turn was probably a good heads up for Clayton to jam the yeah. Aetherborn. I believe he drew another mountain. No, there's a desert, but yeah, it's... So his right. hand is now two mountains and Earthshaker Kenra. That's pretty good so here. So the, the Kenras are going to keep this uh, Aeth Aetherborn? The Aetherborn, yeah. I yeah. don't know why I blanked out there from blocking, which is actually really good for Jesse. It keeps Clayton off the life gain. And also, Aetherborn is just really good because it can tr it uh, can kill any of Jesse's creature and not die to them, mm -hmm. which is very important. And now we're going to see a block here. The Glint Sleep Siphoner is going to block the... Bowmaker with three cards under it, and this is exactly what. Whoa, that siphoner should not die. Oh Jess, yeah, Jesse sacked Jesse it. Jesse sacked it. Anyway, so and I think Clayton thought that Jesse was going to sack it. Um, that's why he made that block. And I believe like Jesse's fine with Clayton having that around right now, mm -hmm. but I did not get a look at the three cards that he drew. So uh, we'll see. I did not. I I believe there was one. Do right, we have another? With another Aetherborn. That's huge. Another Siphoner. <laughs> and Clayton's doing something that I really like out of these decks that are playing Glint Sleep Siphon, or not Glint Sleep, Gifted Aetherborn. A lot of people will just sit back on the Gifted Aetherborn and hope that it can just prevent them attacking, block, gain some life. But a lot of the times, Jesse isn't going to attack into the Gifted Aetherborn if he can help it. And also, the Mono Red deck has a lot of falter effects, so meaning making things unable to block. And so this is just Clayton guaranteeing that he gains the life and also putting Jesse on somewhat of a clock. Ooh, and okay. I like, the, like this Nate play here. is huge because yeah, he's no not gaining life. And also, it also because, kills it has, them. because it has zero power, it means it doesn't deal damage to the Soulscar Mage. So that means Death Touch no death isn't going to do yeah. anything. Also, Soulscars will just be able to finish it off here. Correct. 
There. Ooh, <laughs> Excellent. So we have a lot of negativity flying the around The Soulscar Mage is actually... That was a lot of good work from the Soulscar Mage. Yeah, and then we're sacking this draft. And this is the power of Bomat Courier. Yes, one one is. doesn't do much anymore, and although it was I think it was a Ferocidon in two lands. Um, definitely a Ferocidon. It looks like a one scavenger is ground. Land, but I'm not sure. It was a scavenger ground, and then okay. I think just a mountain. So Clayton's already down to ten. Uh, he's drawing extra cards from the Siphoners, which isn't. Ooh, there's a Death Gorge Scavenger. That's pretty nice. Death Gorge Scavenger is gonna be big here. Yeah, and Clayton actually should not be too afraid of Jesse's board here. There isn't a big thing like a Chandra or a Hazaret or anything like that. Yeah, you're that. absolutely right. Especially since the Death Gorge Scavenger is also just another good blocker. Yeah, it's a good blocker. It's gonna gain life. It can also and gain him life. Yeah. The real problem here is if Clayton, he's a never to return in this hand. If he uses that on one of these insignificant creatures, then he might just lose to this Ferocidon. I but think that's what he's thinking about too right now. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think he's gonna do that. Just kind of by the way he's positioning his mana. Um, but we'll see. I don't think if you're Jesse or if you're Clayton, I don't think you're ever actually scared of enough of anything on the board. Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, it's a huge to kill it. threat to Clayton right now. Uh, it's it's not a huge clock. It's a two one and a one two. Yeah, it's, uh, and you can block and trade with almost all the stuff that's going on here. He can, yeah. I like this attack because it gives Clayton another draw next turn. Oh, definitely, yeah. So yeah, this is Clayton's uh, main deck is kind of very well set up against. It is Jesse here. Uh, the scavengers in the main is also just a very big thing. Uh, if you if you can take out the Earthshaker Kenros when they're in the graveyard, you gain the two life and you prevent the Eternalize. Yeah, which is one of the mono red decks ways to kind of stay alive in the late game, which is something that. Really puts this mono red deck ahead of other mono red decks in the past. It's not as fast as some other mono red decks have been, like when Monastery Swift Spear and like Magic Origins was in standard yeah. when Yul Larson won the Pro Those Tour. were much faster than this. Yeah, uh, but also, this one just has so much more staying power. It, it is. Jesse also takes a much more, uh, I, I don't want to say mid rangey version of this deck, but he plays for uh, Frostodons in the main. That's actually uh, kind of stock now. It is? Okay. Yeah. Well, I know he was one of the first people to ever do it. Uh, like, m actually, like, right when it started. Yeah. Uh, Harsh Mentors in the main, like, uh, Hazaret. It's, it's more anti- it, It's just really- Anti-energy. Uh, yeah, it's mostly anti-energy, which is the main thing that you need to worry about. But it does give him a really good late game. Yeah. And also just Hazaret, it's because of the indestructible yeah, threat, just and Hazaret it also has that clause of pay three mana, shock them, basically. And then also Ramanop Ruins, a land that can throw an extra four, six, even eight points mm -hmm. of damage. Uh, speaking of Hazaret, uh, Vraska's Contempt, I believe, is a card that Clayton plays two of in the main. That go sounds about right. Uh, it just It's very good. I mean, mm -hmm. any god, it just gets rid of. Mm -hmm. And now here does... This is a weird sequencing here from Clayton. I would have wanted to play this... Never to return before I play the Rogue Refiner, so I don't take an extra yes, point of damage. Yeah, it's, it's the one point of damage, but... And he didn't really need to draw the land to let this happen, so I think there was a little bit of right. a misstep there by Clayton. Every life point does matter in this especially kind of matchup. In the, yeah, especially in this matchup against Red. Especially when you're looking at your opponent's board and seeing he has six points of burn on the table. Now, it's over three turns, and you could probably kill him before that really matters, but... Still... All right, so there's the Kenra gone. Yeah. Uh, now we're just going to okay. one for one trade here. I think that's fine for Clayton. So we have a harsh mentor. It's not really that good here. Another land from Jesse. So he's gonna be able to activate this Ramanap, but but he's gonna die before those matter. Exactly. It's it's not gonna do him anything. So he, I believe he's handless now too. Playing this harsh mentor, he looks in his graveyard, but like, I believe he's all out of Kenra's. Yes, he is. He only had one, and it has been yeah. exiled. So Jesse's not looking too good. And this is kind of how the matchup normally plays out. Um, if Soltai doesn't get too far behind in the early game, then it can normally stabilize in the mid to late game. And Jesse hasn't seen any of his like bigger threats. He hasn't found a Hazaret. He hasn't found a Chandra. I don't know how he feels about main deck Glorybringers, but he hasn't found any of those if he has them. He also just hasn't been able to really handle Clayton's threats. Like, the uh, the two Aetherborns, he was able to put two Nagel and Nagel encounters on it. But, like, Clayton still has that blocker, and it's just he hasn't even needed to use it, too. Because while Jesse was yeah. doing that, his scavenger was able to get in there. 
So that, that shot could have been used to kill the scavenger instead. There was just too many threats from Clayton that just he had to deal with. Yep, that's fair. And also too many lands for Jesse, I, I'd imagine. Yeah, uh, it's... I believe he pitched three off his first bomb bat. Uh, he might have been two. two. Yeah, he pitched okay. two off the first bomb bat. So here comes an activation of scavenger grounds. I'm not 100% sure why... Yeah, We're I'm not really that. following that play either. I would rather say there's nothing in the graveyard, I think. I guess he could have returned. Just because? rid of the return, I mean, but I don't think you, the 2-2 really matters here. That was the only thing in the graveyard that was actually relevant, but um, yeah, I'm not sure why I did that. Maybe he's scared of another Death Gorge scavenger? That, that was my other thought, but he could still just do it in response. Yeah. This is also take because he had to sacrifice a desert to do it. He's taking two damage off the table. Yeah, he's taking two damage off the table. Which is, I don't think it's actually gonna matter here, but it could. Yeah, definitely could. I mean, whenever you play an aggro deck, especially these red aggro decks, you always have to be aware of every single point of damage you can eke out, even if you're in this losing position, because you have to give yourself the most outs to top deck in any given situation. Yep. So Clayton's just going to trade. So that's going to put a Kenner in the graveyard, not exile. It, it looks like it's an exile, but I'm not sure. Because he used the scavenger grounds, correct? I believe so, yeah. Well, no, that Kenra just died. Right, but I'm just saying it's tap side it was with the rest of his cards. Uh, ah. That's how Jesse determines his graveyard versus exile. Jesse's a little weird, and I kind of wish he would make them gotcha. a little bit more distinct. Well, because there's like a a number of cards in each, so I'm not sure which one's which. So the it, the Kenra is in the graveyard. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, well, not anymore. But that is a little weird to just have it. Uh, and that's like, you see, that's very confusing. And that's something that, that I've seen yeah. a lot of players do. I used to do it myself. And it's just like. I like having very separate It's just zones. awkward. Yeah. Like, yeah. I used to just put my. It's best exile. to just make it very clear. Yeah. Fatal push. And this is just where Clayton's just going to start to run away with this game. He's... Yeah, you're okay. You're back. Sorry. Okay. He already started to run away with the game about, I, I would say, like, three or four turns ago. Yeah. Really, once Jesse ran out of cards in his hand, that's just when it was pretty much over for him. He had to be in top deck mode, and he just wasn't able to get any gas off the top while Clayton was still, with these siphoners, just drawing uh, additional cards every turn, just putting him even further in the lead. Uh, and as you can see, Clayton's also gained, like, a ton of life this uh, game. Uh, just through four life gain cards, but two of them were killed pretty fast, and then the scavenger only got four life. But, like, all those points mattered so much that uh, he's just completely out of reach. Oh, yeah, definitely. And honestly, like, it's not a really big deal because these players know most of their opponent's deck, but they if do, I was yeah. Jesse, would have conceded to that Gonti. Don't want my opponent looking at four extra cards. Yeah. This doesn't, this, I don't even know. When you know you're going, going to, yeah, when you know you're going to lose, uh, just not giving your opponent the information is just the right play to make. Yep, okay, and that's going to be game one. Going to Clayton Cardinal over Jesse Sinopoli. I've been corrected. I used to pronounce that wrong. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Yeah, uh, I've been told it it's, Sinopoli. it's Sinopoli. It's All Italian, right. not Greek. That's I knew it was something Italian, he made me aware of. Still not. But anyway, so while I play this up in here, I just want to give a quick shout-out to our sponsor host store, GameSwap, in Mason, Ohio. You can see the little insignia on the screen in front of you there. And they're located on Reading Road in Mason, Ohio, also known as State Route 42. And they have everything you could ever want in regards to magic cards, products, accessories, then video games, board games. Uh, they really just have it all for games. Yeah, just space to play games, all that. They've got some DVDs, movies, all that jazz. So if you guys are ever in the Cincinnati suburb area around Mason, Ohio, Come look us up here. We'd love to have you. It'd be great. Speaking of the Cincinnati area, we have a bunch of events coming up in, in the nearby area. There's yeah, one in the Cincinnati SEG, area. but then there's, uh, I believe, two events in Columbus, two in Indianapolis, and one in Louisville. Where's the second one? Well, there's one in Columbus this weekend. And then there's a GP uh, later on. In Columbus? Columbus is getting a GP this year? You're right. It's Team Sealed, I believe. Yes. Yeah, Columbus is getting a GP I as well as an that. SEG, which is this weekend. Um, And then... I believe Indianapolis has a GP and an SEG Correct. as well. Uh, yeah. Indianapolis is Rivals of Ixalan release weekend. Yep. It's team sealed. 
And so if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to talk to us about any kind of rivals of Ixalan cards, here are our takes on them or anything, feel free to leave us a question in, in the comment section of the video or in the Twitch chat, as it were. Personally, right uh, as of right now, looking at the spoilers, uh, it looks like it's going to be a very fun sealed. I agree with that. I have, there's a lot of cards that I'm looking forward to playing in Limited. In Limited, um, for sure. But There's also uh, a lot of cards that I look at in Limited, and I'm like, how the crap am I going to beat this if my right. opponent plays it? Yeah. There, uh, this set looks phenomenal for Limited. It's going to be a very excited draft format, sealed format. It looks great. Mm -hmm. uh, but me and Patrick were talking earlier about how these cards are actually going to play into uh, Standard. And um, the answer that... is... They're not. Uh, that, that, oh, they, they They're not, and I want to put an asterisk on that because I don't think that uh, anything can surpass the consistency and power level of energy or the decks that can compete against energy, such as Mono Red, um, yeah. I guess technically some of the control decks... Uh, controls now, uh, a little it's, on it's the It's okay, right now, yeah. But. It's not great. Um, now, if you do play... If they do get rid of it, an energy card in some way, like banning a Tune with Aether or banning Rogue Refiner, those are the two Rogue I would Refiner, look... Those uh, are the two I would look to, and I'm honestly kind of hoping Wizards does do that, which I hate saying. I, I, I also hate it. Uh, ever since... Uh, what was the first one? Emrakul banned? Emrakul, Smuggler's or Cup, was Reflector Smuggler? Mage. Yeah. Those were all banned at so the same time. So those first three... That was, uh, for me, being a standard player and not having to deal with bans for the longest time because everything was, you know, it was pretty, it was a pretty good uh, balanced format, right? Yeah. Uh, but I, eh, there was, like, Siege Rhino and things, but those Siege weren't as great. bad. I don't care about it. <laughs> but, like, ever since we've been giving these bans, it's just been making us think more and more about placing these bans on these powerful cards. So if we ban, like, a Tomb with Aether, um, Servant of the Conduit, Rogue Refiner, you know, any of these energy cards, it'll actually just take down the consistency of Teamer uh, tremendously. And that would be the one uh, scenario where we would actually start seeing a lot of these Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan cards. Yeah, the problem you'll see with all these standard bands, aside from the first ones being Emrakul, Smuggler's Copter, and Reflector Mage, every band we've had since being Felidar Guardian and Aetherworks Marvel, and also kind of Emrakul to an extent. Uh, it's been yeah. I the they banned the top end card from the Energy Shell. Like, the Energy Shell has been dominant in Magic, in standard at least. Since Aether Revolt was printed when we got... Yeah, it was just right off the bat. Yeah, the, the, the dominant deck energy was there. Wa first was Four Colors Daily. Used the Energy Shell. Then it was Marvel. Used the Energy Shell. And now it's just Energy. So I'm hoping Wizards doesn't think that, like, banning Glorybringer is the fix to right. beating Energy. That it's is not. definitely not A it. A lot of Four Color Energy decks aren't even playing Glorybringer anymore. I know the Four Color Energy deck I have, I'm not. Yeah, so it's we, just not even that big of a it. deal. I mean, it's just a tune is what really makes the mana base, like, great. Like work. Yeah, yeah. It, a tune really just seals it all together and makes it yeah. work very well. Uh, and then after that, Rogue Refiner yeah. would be my second, I think. So uh, That or Servant. Yeah, but. J Crazy. I agree. It does feel like a lot of the cards are catering catering to EDH players, and that's just a symptom of having tribal for, tribal sets. Yeah, it, it really is. You're going to be looking for all of these ways to impact different like tribes, impacting diff, uh, the ways you can play all these cards. The set, much like Kaladesh, is going to be very parasitic within itself. Um, like we're never going to see an energy mentioned in almost any other set. Unless we go back to Kaladesh, please, dear God, for now, don't go back to Kaladesh. Yeah. Um, but it's like we're not going to see the tribal t like card type until we go back to Lorwyn, basically. We're not going to see uh, Infect unless we go back to Phyrexia. And so all, just all these different tribal mechanics, we're not, we're not going to see these different tribes interacting with all of these other cards, and that just makes them weaker in and of themselves. Um, because tribal, like, just relating to their tribes, isn't its own mechanic. They ca they're not pushing these cards as much as they pushed the energy cards, because they... Wizards has said they didn't think energy was going to see consistent play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Good job, Wizards. Way to really test out those cards. But yeah, so Hold on. going back to the game here, speaking of energy, um, this is much 
a much better start for Jesse. He was on the play this time. He was able to answer a gifted Aetherborn. He did get one of his creatures essence, essence extractioned. It's kind of hard to say. But other than that, it still looks pretty good for him. He's got board presence. And Clayton does not. Also, I think this is going into Clayton's turn four. Uh, it is. That was the big thing last game. Clayton had a huge board presence. I believe his, he had more creatures than Jesse did. Probably. Most of the game. But, but this now that uh, that's not the case, Jesse actually has a much better chance, I feel, at, the, at just winning this game. Yeah. I will say, the new Phoenix, I actually do like. I think that's a, like can look like to be a very cool card. Oh, uh, the owl thing? It kind of looks like an owl. I'm pretty sure it's I don't owl. know the name, Nelson, but is there any way we get that on the stream? Oh, uh, we, yeah, Some we'll kind try of and get that pulled up. That card looks sweet, and I really want that to be played in, returning in, in Phoenix. mono red. Yeah. Rekindling Phoenix. That's the name of the card. I love this card. Uh, actually, the, there's like, it's basically kind of like a copy of three other cards that we've seen so, semi-recently. Ooh, Lord. Turn four has it. Now, there uh, is a Brass is Contempt to deal with it, but still. Yes. Brass, uh, like I said earlier, Brass of Contempt is a is a big one for these Hazarets. Also, Chandra's if Jesse plays them. Yep. So this is just a a mentor beatdown. It it really is, yeah. All right, so we have Rekindling Phoenix, uh, which we're getting on the screen now. But it is two red red for a four three flyer. When it dies, you create a zero one red elemental creature token with at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this creature and return target card named Rekindling Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. So, basically, what this does is that it means that you get kind of an undying effect, whereas this Phoenix is just going to keep coming back with haste and attacking. But it's it's a pretty simple fix to the problem if your opponent's playing this card. All you need is a su summer removal spell to get to get rid of the O one. Yeah, but like you, but it forces you to but remove. It forces you to f remove an O one. Yeah, is, exactly. Uh, so you either have to. Problem. Because it's a 4-3 flyer, you're probably going to have to use a removal spell to kill it, or you're going to have to trade a significant amount of your board. So like, Right, flying's the big part of that, too. Exactly. If you have Whirl of Virtuoso, you can make three Thopters, and that's using up nine of your energy, which is huge. Yeah. Just to kill that one thing. And then you have to use a Magma Spray, Harness Lightning, or whatever to kill the O1, which Correct. is just not by any means worth it. So this card is, I think, sweet. Yeah. Also, it's just, I think this is one of the most flavorful phoenix creatures we've seen in recent past like yeah. this is literally a phoenix when it dies you have this kind of tiny little elemental embryo and then you give it enough time and boom it's back yep uh i, I like this card a lot and i really hope it uh sees play but again this is one of the few cards that i actually think could compete with it i think so you. uh because this is gonna go in mono red i'm almost sure of it so the problem I have with it going in mono red is what do you cut your four drop? That is the thing. Your four drop slot is already very contested in the form of both Hazaret and Chandra. You're not never cutting Hazaret. I could see you cutting Chandra for this, um, and it could be a replacement for Chandra when uh, Kaladesh rotates for mono red. Uh, that is, I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be. But also, I feel like this Phoenix is just faster than Chandra. It might be. Like it still kind of does the same thing. It doesn't. It kind of give, gives you card advantage in a way. It's it's unknown. Well, uh, I feel like we'll find out within the first couple of weeks of standard. Definitely, definitely. Um, but I, I'm really, really hoping that this card does good because I there, there's a lot of sweet cards, uh, are that that we see from these spoilers so far. That would be great if you could play all these in standard, but you know, you, there's not all the opportunities. But this is one of the few cards that I think has a has a shot at making it. Um. Okay, you're Joe. You are looking at my weakness. I actually have no clue what's going on with standard rotation. I don't know if Kaladesh and Amakit rotate out at the same time. They do. I'm being told they do, but I'm not sure. On you that can one. look at. Uh, I believe it's called What's in Standard dot com. I, I think that's what it is. Yeah. yeah let's, you, you, I yeah, tried to look. We're let's, gonna Google it right now. We're, we're, we'll find out. We'll give you an answer here. Uh, so it looks like Clayton's at one life right now. Is he at one life? Uh, that's what it looks like. And Jesse's swinging in, so Clayton's going to double block it, which is smart. Uh, they do release at the same time. Okay, yeah. But they do, so like, they, they will rotate out at the same time. 
Cool. So yeah, mono red might not even be like mono red probably won't be a really thing, a thing. Who knows? It'll depend on dominaria, correct? Well, yeah, like I don't know. A dominaria, I am very. I am very excited for. for. Yes. I think every like, I think every magic player should just be excited for dominaria. They they really should, and I really hope that that's when I get to play things that I wanted to play in standard. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I just hope my just my biggest thing. That I'm hope there's I'm very excited about for Dominaria. Have you seen the designer list? Or the I have, possibly. Do you know who's des part designing part of that set? No. Richard Garfield. Richard Garfield. He is back okay. to designing Magic. That is sweet. Yes, Dominaria is the OG plane. If you look at almost every it is. single it really is. story and every single uh, Magic story, I think until Mirrodin block, like the original Mirrodin block. All of that takes place on Dominaria and different continents in Dominaria. The original Retherlight. Dominaria is the place. The orig or original Phyrexians, although I guess they technically were born on Wrath and also Phyrexia. But still. The Mending, all that All right, so great Clayton stuff. plays an Aegis Here's Harvester. So he's... Slowly gaining life, but surely. And yeah, and this Jesse's is drawing lands. This is the what you're kind of signing up for when you're playing a mono red deck. Is sometimes you just yeah draw so the wrong Clayton's part of your deck. It. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. So uh, Jesse got him down to one, and then Clayton still managed to find his out. Yep. So this is gonna be round one here. Um, yeah, I don't know what was going. on. I think there was a slight technical malfunction on. Just trying to get Clayton's life total updated. But Clayton's life total was greater than zero. And that's what down, you need he to went down stay the one alive. And then gained three from the Harvester, which kept him in there, I think. Yeah. So this will be our first round today. Uh, it's going to be Clayton taking it 2-0 over Jesse. Uh, it's kind of how I feel like these Soltai energy matchups tend to Especially go. Especially with Soltai, because you have uh, the... Aetherborns. Yeah, he has, and Clayton's and de Harvesters. Clayton's deck is a little more geared against Mono Red. We have a lot of players who enjoy playing fast, aggressive decks here, so Clayton has kind of adjusted his deck to fight that metagame. You could see evidence by main deck Death Gorge Scavengers, main deck Gifted Aetherborns, and his sideboard he even has more. I think there was a copy of Noxious Gear Hulk in his hand by the end of it. Yeah, I know you play those. I that, love that, that card. So I remember much. I played that card in when Black Green Delirium was first printed, right when Kaladesh came out. Oh, yep. that card was great. I think it could still see some play. Oh, definitely. If there's if there is a good black, like mid range slash control deck, I definitely think that's a card. That's also just it doesn't line up well against uh, Bristling Hydra, but any of the uh, any of right. the other energy creatures, it's pretty great to have. But yep, so that is going to be it for us for round one. We will see you guys in just a little bit for round two. Don't go anywhere.